guys, Nick Janice from Guitar Interactive and GI Plus. Guess what? It's Monday. We're doing the thing that we do on Mondays, which is hang out and talk about the guitar. Uh, unfortunately, as you guys can probably see, the little uh, blue and purple lights that are behind me have bit the dust, so I'm going to have to get some new ones, unfortunately. We'll talk more about that in a little bit, but hey, what are you going to do? Listen, uh, if you're joining us for the first time, uh, just clearing some space for myself here, if you're joining yourselves for the first time, if you're joining us for the first time, rather, uh, hey, great to have you on board. Thanks for joining us. We do this every Monday. Monday evenings, we hang out, we talk about the guitar. Uh, if you are one of our returning uh, cabal of streamers, it's great to have you back. Uh, we love seeing you guys, love your comments, love your videos that you're posting, uh, tagging us with your playing, absolutely adore it, right? So listen, um, today we're discussing a few things regarding practice. We're gonna be going over a guided, um, a guided uh, practice session, uh, for want of a better word. So we're actually going to practice together. So I'm going to give you guys a quick heads up now that if you don't have a guitar with you, you may want to go and grab it because we're going to be doing some practicing stuff. Um, of course, there is valuable stuff here. If you are uh, tuning in without a guitar, you'll still get some good stuff out of what we're doing today. Um, and you'll get to watch some guitar playing as well, which is kind of nice. And you get to imagine your own guitar playing in the spaces where we jam back and forward. We'll be doing some buddy style practice, which is something that I like to do. We've had a lot of fun with in this channel before. So uh, we'll talk more about that in a moment. But before we do a little bit of housekeeping, uh, if you're tuning in for the first time, as we mentioned previously, hi, great to see you. Uh, if you're one of our returning streamers, this probably won't apply to you because you know you already have done all this stuff but even still if you want to help us keep the lights on you want to help me get some new lights so that i can actually turn the lights on um then a couple of ways you can do it that will uh be greatly appreciated first of all you can do it a whole bunch of ways without spending a single penny or leaving your house or even leaving your chair you can give us a like on whatever platform you happen to be watching on if that's youtube if that's facebook whatever the thumbs up uh is that is what we want right um and it really does help love uh icons really help on facebook too so if you're watching us on facebook hit the love icon don't just hit the like button hit the love button um what else? You can also share this with your guitar playing friends. We would love to get this out to as many guitar players as humanly possible. And of course, you can always catch this in the replay and pass it on to your guitar playing friends if they're a little busy right now or you too, you're too engrossed in what it is that we're doing, which is fine by me. It means it's working. Of course, other ways you can help us keep the lights on, you can go to, see this sign up here? GI Plus, go to this URL. You can get more guitar lessons, full length courses from the likes of myself, Sam Bell, Giorgio Cerchi, Tom Quayle, Michael Caswell, Rick Graham. Uh, who else do we have? Andy James, Andy Wood, you name it. They are all uh, all in there, right? And they're great courses, myself included. I got a bunch of courses in there too. You can go there, you can sign up for GI Plus. Um, you know, we think you'll get a lot of value out of it. Our um, streamers who've signed up so far have been letting us know which courses they've been working on and man you know what it is some of the results we've been seeing have been absolutely fabulous so listen if you're thinking about it maybe today is the day right maybe today is the day so listen uh, a couple of other things first of all uh, before we get stuck in with the chat just want to remind you that this is going to be an interactive stream so if you don't have your guitar you should think about going and getting one now let's check in with our, uh, our comment section and see how everyone's doing it is of course bank holiday monday here in the uk but we don't believe in such things here at gi we stream for you guys regardless because I like hanging out with you guys. I like hanging out and playing the guitar. So here we are. We're going to be doing the stream thing. So uh, if you are one of our UK friends who are joining us on a bank holiday Monday, hey, thanks for joining us. Much, uh, much appreciated. So anyway, who else do we have? Let's tune in and see who is in our comment section. Sacred God Slavers first. Oh yeah, stream on Labor's Day. That's a, is it Labor Day today? Is that how, is that the holiday in, uh, is it a holiday in Italy or is it a holiday in the US? Who knows? Uh, I know you say God's Labor is our Italian correspondent, so if it's a holiday in Italy, then fantastic. We're happy that we can stream on a holiday for you. Um, that's Ace Big Win. Hi, Nick. Hi, guys. Well, hey, man. Great to have you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Marcini's in the house says, uh, hi, Nick. Hi, guys. Hope you're all well. I'm very well. Thank you very much. Tomorrow, I'm going to see Steve Vai live. Oh, my goodness, right? Steve Vai is the man. If this is the first time you've seen him, to experience Steve Vai live is a very special thing. Steve is uh, just one of those people that has, I don't know, it's kind of hard to describe, but he has something very special about him as a player, as a person. I was lucky enough to chat to Steve. Um, I've been lucky enough, to chat, lucky enough to chat to him a couple of times briefly, but I was lucky enough to chat to him uh, for a full-length interview in the most recent edition of Guitar Interactive magazine. He's a gentleman. He's a really, really great guy, but man, what a player. Just, oh, hey, 
like blow the top of your head off kind of guitar player you will love it you'll have a great time um and this new guitar on friday does that mean it's the prs well hey there we go this friday i'm getting myself a very nice gift a sacred god slayer well dude if you're picking up that prs you are not going to regret it right you guys all know that i love prs guitars that's no secret i think you're going to love it too so congratulations man uh well deserved you know you've put in a lot of hard, put in a lot of hard work with your practice uh you've made some huge strides in your guitar playing i think it's time you reward yourself with a nice new fit uh, anybody else who's got new toys, by the way, let me know, because uh, I'm playing with a new toy today as well. Um, it's not mine, unfortunately, but it's on loan to me from the good folks at Victory. Uh, this is the Victory Super Jack. Now, it's one of the three uh, flavors of high gain amp, but it's the one that I don't have in my studio. So I was really excited to have that arrive. Uh, it's the amp design in collaboration with Guthrie Govan. It's super smooth. Um, it's maybe a little thick sounding for me, so I've had to dial out quite a lot of low end, but there's a really great bounce and chime uh, kind of inside all of that thickness. It's a really cool sounding app, so if you're enjoying the tone, let me know in the comments. Uh, who else do we have? Sacred God Slayer is in the house. Uh, oh, he's picked up a Helix LT. Nice. Uh, so I must wait before for a while before I purchase some new gear. Uh, but the next one is going to be a Vintera Tele. That's a great shout, right? We love Telecasters. Uh, and those Vintera guitars are absolutely wonderful. Um, and like a surprising amount of guitar for the money as well you know I mean they're not a cheap guitar by any stretch of the imagination but for what you pay you get a lot of guitar right very very cool uh, and also the Helix LT there's a good shout right we like Helix um, you know for my model of choice is a quad cortex but honestly played Helix for a little while I think they're great there's absolutely not a damn thing wrong with them I think they sound fabulous uh, if you know uh, all of the amps were abducted by aliens tomorrow. Would I be happy with the Helix? Probably. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, really love the workflow as well. They've got a really nice, um, I guess, a really nice, easy uh, UI, which we really like. That's cool. Uh, who else in the house? Anyway, with it. anyway, Timothy Appling is in the house. Timothy Appling uh, is in the house. Ahoy, Nick, and the usual early birds. Great to see you. Uh, a new axe. Uh, nice. I'll uh, look for that one while I'm waiting for Nick to arrive with his PRS axe. Got my black PRS today. Realized I hadn't played this one on stream for a while. And what do you know? Played the black guitar. The lights went off. So it's now it's a black guitar against a black backdrop like the good old days. But never mind. Uh, never mind. Um, so we got some discussion on PRSs and all that sort of stuff. Uh, very, very cool. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, who else do we have in the house? Uh, Larry Warren is here. Larry, it's great to see you. Uh, who else do we have? Um, Craig and Tom is tuning in from a trip in Italy. Depending on where you are in Italy, you should go and visit Sacred God Slayer. He is our I Italian correspondent. Uh, Italy's beautiful, though. Let me know whereabouts you are. Um, I've been a couple of times. Absolutely love it. Love the people, love the food, uh, love the uh, the landscapes, the temperature more than anything else. We like it warm. It's nice. Uh, yeah, great country. Um, hopefully the Wi-Fi won't let you down with your spot. Ah, Strat and Spark Mini are at the, at the uh, readiness. Look at this. Spark Go. Pick this up at the NAMM show. This is, uh, this is not actually mine. This belongs to Jonathan Graham. Uh, so Jonathan is going to get this back. Um, unfortunately, I wish it were mine because it's really cool. It looks like a little camera or something. Um, and it sounds very good as well, right? They're just increasingly shrinking the sparks. I have a Spark Mini up here somewhere that I absolutely love. That Spark Go is like the same thing, only tiny. It's crazy. Um, so like, I'm wondering what's going to be next. It's going to be like the Spark USB stick. It's going to be about this big. Um, you'll plug it into your guitar and you'll get like quadraphonic sound and everything it's going to be amazing uh who else do we have david yates in the house with some bad news unfortunately uh evening nick even guys unfortunately i'm sidelined on the bench for a few weeks with suspected advanced carpal tunnel syndrome i'm really sorry to hear that man that sucks um injuries happen you know that um it's one of those things what i will say to you is that um for all that is uh it's really really bad news i'm sorry to hear that but uh i will say that you know this sort of thing we have ways of treating this now that are very effective um uh, my bass player in one of my bands dave has um carpal tunnel he's had surgery in both of his wrists he's right his reign now so the recovery process it took a little while and he had to wear some wrist splints for a while but honestly um he was absolutely fine so you know if surgery is an option um, I would consider it because Dave had some very successful surgery on both hands. This does not constitute medical advice, by the way. Just throwing that out there. Just uh, anecdotally, like I say, my boy Dave um, had, you know, carpal tunnel in both wrists. 
did really, really well. I have this recurring ache. Uh, it's more of a tendonitis thing than a carpal tunnel thing. It's in both thumbs, uh, right in the tendon. It drives me absolutely crazy, but you know, what are you gonna do? Um, so yeah, I can sympathize, it really sucks. What I've got is nowhere near as bad as that, unfortunately. Uh, you know, unfortunately, I'm not sad that I don't have it, but, um, you know, uh, anyway, really, really sorry to hear that you're suffering, man. I hope you get better very, very soon. Uh, and of course, we've got lots of well wishes in the stream, which is lovely to see. We like that. Um, so yes, all is not lost, um, you know, and I'm sure you'll be right as rain and playing again uh, very, very soon. Uh, who else do we have? Let's take a little bit of a look. David Peterson is in the house. David, it's great to see you. Uh, Foghornish is here. Daryl Daryl Queen says, uh, evening all. Let's see what Nick is going to challenge you with today. I'm going to challenge you with some improvisation, Daryl. Uh, our friend Par Panu is in the house. Uh, Mark Crandall is in the house. Great to see you. Uh, who else do we have? Just going to quickly scroll because we've got loads and loads and loads. Ah, here's a cool recommendation. Uh, I've got a lesson for you. Intervals for guitar. Uh, Crystal clear and ultimate giant guide by q jam very cool we like that intervals are an important uh and um i guess not not taught as often enough but they're a very important subject for the guitar uh and kind of you know the route to mastery uh of the fretboard comes in the form of learning your intervals uh if that makes sense probably even more than learning uh your notes per se uh who else mustache metal uh gnt prepared guitar in hand ready for the stream glad to hear it my man uh mark mcnish is here uh, uh hello all hello nick i'm struggling to read today apparently uh the community here gave me some feedback on a question i had while you while you were gone i'll ask in a moment hi for now oh brilliant yeah let me know uh because i would love to give you some feedback too kim's in the house kim it's great to see you uh hope you're feeling well i haven't seen kim in a little while um i'm gonna be down in the studio uh, a couple of weeks time so hopefully i'll uh, i'll see kim down there we'll be able to catch up um who else do we have? Uh, lots of cool comments coming in. Uh, a new friend, uh, Wood, I'm guessing. Hello from Washington State. Hey man, if you're a new, uh, if you're a new uh, viewer, first time viewer, it's great to see you. Or if you're a first time commenter, hey, thanks for your comment, appreciate it. Uh, it's great to see you. Hello from Washington State, indeed. Um, who else do we have? M Riley's in the house as well. M Riley, it's great to see you. Uh, and this. Don't know what that means. Play a Pintu Duru. Uh, a pint of what? I don't know. Who knows? Anyway, listen, let's get cracking with the Nakin. So we're going to get down to the meat of today's session, which is essentially a... We're going to do a practical example of the guided improvisation sessions that I've been talking about for a little while now. Uh, full disclosure, these are not something that I've invented. Um, they were shown to me by my friend Nick Harrison. Um... Uh, but I gather this is the sort of thing that lots of players will do in one form or another. I know Tom talks about this quite a lot. Tom Quayle uh, talks about it a lot in his own practice, um, the um, guided or structured improvisation um, sort of thing. He uses a particular framework of limitations. We're going to use uh, a one determinate random today because I have my dice here. You guys know I'm a big fan of rolling four and six sided dice to determine outcomes on the guitar. We're going to pick one today. Uh, we're going to use that to determine the way that we're going to play. But we're going to be going through this um, kind of together for the next 30 minutes. So if you have your guitar, um, we're going to go through our guided practice session together. If you haven't done so already, go and grab your guitar because you're going to need it. Um, now, the way we're going to do this is we're going to be playing along with the backing track. We're going to be playing in C sharp minor and we're going to be using a series of limitations. Now, to make this accessible for everybody, we're going to use the technical framework of limitations today, which is limiting ourselves by the number of strings that we're able to play. But before we do that, let's just establish a baseline so everyone can actually play together. So if we go to our ninth position, we're gonna start here, right? This is gonna be our C sharp minor pentatonic scale. You will want to explore out from this, but this is a good place to begin in case you're stuck. So we can start by playing. On the high E string, we can play 12, then nine. On the B string, we can play 12, nine. On the middle three strings, we can play 11, nine, 11, nine, 11, nine. And then we can play 12, 9. That's our minor pentatonic scale. If you want to play along but don't know any more scales than that, that's okay because you can play along using just that scale. You'll be absolutely fine. If you wanted to take a little step further, we could go to the natural minor scale, which would give us this. We could play. This is one example of a place we could play. You can play it all over the place. But this is one example. So you could play 12, 11, 9, 12, 10, 9, 11, 9, 8, 
and then on the low three strings, 11, 9, 7, 11, 9, 7, 11, 9, 7. So once more, it's going to be starting position 9, fingers 4, 3, 1, 4, 3, 1. Then fingers 4, 2, 1, 4, 2, 1. Fourth finger down to 11, we're going to play 4, 2, 1. And then this stretchy 4, 2, 1 shape. Down at the bottom. Now, the way we're going to do this is these are the scales we're going to use, but if you wanted to branch out, you'll see me doing it. I'm going to be branching out all up and down the fretboard. This is a good opportunity to explore the fretboard and start to figure out some notes uh, that are in C-sharp minor in different places. We're picking C-sharp because I have a cool backing track in C-sharp, which is available as part... Well, it's available on the Guitar Interactive YouTube channel. Um, it's also the backing track that we use um, for a couple of the example solos in uh, Expressive Techniques, which we'll talk about in a second, because Expressive Techniques, really fun course. Uh, I'll show you more about that in a minute. But what we're going to do with this, we're going to play our scales, and then we're going to limit ourselves to certain strings for a certain period of time. Now, you could limit yourself a bunch of different ways. You could play just triads, for example. You could play just triads and then just four note groups and then just five note groups, etc. We could limit ourselves uh, melodically in terms of uh, the note density we're allowed to use. We could limit ourselves uh, rhythmically. We're going to limit ourselves technically purely because it's a little more accessible for folks who don't know their triads, they don't know the seventh arpeggios, etc. And I want everybody to be able to join in with this, but there are lots of other ways we can do that in a minute. Now, let's very quickly jam. And let's explore this track. Then I'm going to show you the uh, course that goes along with this. Then we'll come back. We'll do the session together. So here's our C sharp minor backing track. The way we'll do this is we'll go back and forward in turns. I'm going to play a little bit. You can play back to me. So let's just establish the scales that we're going to play with. I'm going to play something using the pentatonic scale, which would sound like this. You take a turn. So you can play me something in this space. I'll leave you a little space to make this happen. I'm going to play something using the minor scale this time. You take a turn. Again, let me know what you think of the tone tonight, because it's a different amp to what I'm normally using. But you fill the space here with some music. That's what we want. Let's do it freely, so I'm going to play one time here. Take a turn. All right. Let's stop there. Very nice. Okay, now, we're going to come back in a second, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the... I've just realized I've had your questions answered for the whole stream. And that's not the thing. Pro level technique. That's what it should say. Um, never mind. Never mind. What are you going to do? Um, yeah, it's live TV, folks. Uh, when we come back, I'm going to show you um, how we might go through this as part of a structured practice session. And we're actually going to do a practice session together. But for the time being, I want to show you this. This uses the same backing track. This is expressive techniques. You want to learn how to make a guitar playing more expressive, uh, more musical, you make your phrasing better, etc. This is one of the courses that we have in the subjects available as part of your GI Plus subscription. Right down here is the URL to go and get it. When we come back, we're going to practice together. Hi guys, Nick Jennison from Guitar Interactive and GI Plus. Does your playing sound like this? When really you'd like it to sound like this? Now, the difference between these two examples are not the notes that are being played, but rather the way the notes are being played. I'm sure you've heard this before. Guitar players will say to you, it's not what you play, it's how you play it. And when it comes to creating interesting, emotive and musical sounding guitar lines, that is very much the case. And in this course, Expressive Techniques Part 1, we aim to equip you 
with the tools to sound more musical, more emotive, more interesting, and ultimately more expressive on the guitar. And we are gonna do this by exploring the three principal left hand expressive techniques, which are slides, bends, and vibrato. I'm gonna show you the mechanics of these techniques and how you can execute them cleanly, efficiently, and reliably. I'll also give you some exercises to help develop these techniques. And we're also gonna discuss some musical applications, how you might use these techniques in your own playing. We're gonna go into great depth with that stuff. And I'm also gonna give you a solo study, a piece of music I've prepared. And I'm gonna encourage you and kind of guide you through the process of applying expression to an otherwise expressionless and bare sounding piece of guitar playing. So at the end of this course, you are gonna be able to take otherwise uninteresting and fairly dry pieces of music and turn them into expressive, colorful, musical lines. And you're also gonna be able to take this and apply it to your own playing or to other people's music that maybe you're playing and you want to express in your own way. This is Expressive Techniques Part One. My name is Nick Jennison for Guitar Interactive GI Plus. I hope you'll join me. I will see you in there. So there you go guys, that's a look at Expressive Techniques Part 1. Got some really good stuff in there, I'm really proud of that course. Uh, it took a lot of putting together, let me tell you. Uh, not just the course, but um, you know, taking the years that it took to crystallize those subjects in my mind uh, to the point where I could actually teach them. It, surprisingly, expression is a really difficult thing to teach, um, even though it's probably the most natural thing you would think to do in the guitar. Tough thing to teach though, so you know, that took a lot of putting together. And I'm really proud of the results. I think you'll get some great results out of it too. Now. Here is a great comment from Timothy Appling. He said, I originally learned notes in the guitar fretboard as a musical scale with major notes and sharp or flat notes in between the major notes. That makes sense. So like C, D, E, F, G, etc. Uh, the mastering modes lessons are teaching me to understand the fretboard in a different way and improving the way I play. Now that last bit is the important bit for me, man, and I love to hear that. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. Um, I really love to hear when you guys are getting some uh, some good results out of the stuff that we do in our courses together. Love to hear it, love to hear it. And these live lessons too. Hey, thanks man, I appreciate it. Well, we're about to do a lesson right now. So let's get cracking. We're gonna start with our C sharp minor once again. Just quick reminder in case you're just joining us. We're playing C sharp minor, we're gonna begin by playing a single string. Uh, and let's do this by votes, right? You guys, let me know in the comments, which string do you think we should start on? Don't say the low E, it's terrible, right? Pick one of the treble strings. Let's have E, B, or G, right? You guys let me know in the comments. The first comment is the string that we're gonna do, right? E, B, or G. Now, pick a good one, because we're gonna restrict ourselves to just that string as we go. Let's take a vote. If you don't, then I'm gonna roll the dice and we'll see what we get. So let's see. Uh, let's see what I've got. Four, that's not it. Four again, it wants us to play the D string. The dice wants us to play D. Ah, we got some votes. Satan Godslayer says G. Uh, Marcin says B. Keith MOF says G. Two votes for G. G, it's gonna be. So, gonna be. We're gonna go to our G string, right? Now, the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna play for the next five minutes, back and forward together, using just our G string. Now, here are some goals. I want you to explore as freely as you can with this. Don't be afraid to play wrong notes. I can't hear you. Nobody can hear you, right? It's just you. Don't worry. If you play wrong notes, nobody dies. Nobody dies. It's music. You'll be fine. Um, this is a great opportunity to explore the series of intervals that goes together to make our C sharp minor scale. Listen to what it is that you're playing. Listen and respond. If you play something cool, make a, no a mental note of it and play it again or try and develop it. I'm going to give you some space. I'm going to play along with you. It's not just going to be me screaming into the void. Uh, I'm going to play with you, um, but we're going to do this together, starting with the G string alone on the, for the next five minutes, one string. Once we get to that, once we get to that five minute mark, we're going to add the other string that you guys have voted for. 
which is B. Nice. But starting with G, five minutes of G, if you can believe it, right? Let's play it together, let's see what happens. So I'm gonna start, we'll take like four bars each. So if I go. Now you can use what I'm playing for ideas. Your turn. If you want, you can use what I'm playing for ideas. Or you can uh, just completely abandon that. Or you can copy what I'm playing. Totally up to you. I'm going to go like this. Take a turn, grab your guitar, make sure, if you haven't grabbed your guitar already, now's the time, because this bit's very important. We're gonna do this together. We've got five minutes of this stuff. Here we go, G. Your turn. Now I'm betting already you're starting to phrase a little bit more musically here, but you might be starting to find this a little frustrating. That's okay, stick with it, the reward is coming. Ooh, hello, that was bad. Your turn. It's important to play the bad stuff too. Play the bad stuff, you know not to play it again. Alright, we've got another minute to go. So I'm going to go like this. That was tough. Turn. Didn't quite get the note I was looking for there. So we got a whole minute to go on this stuff. On this one string. I'm gonna go. Your turn. Bit of a funny bend there, but that's alright. I'm gonna explore that tapping thing a bit more on my turn, I think. I'm gonna take one more go at that. You take a turn. All right, I'm gonna take one more turn. been four minutes four minutes of playing together on one string i want you very quickly to take a moment in the comments and write down your observations about playing on one string let's just share it with everyone right so your observations about playing with one string sacred god slayer has already given us a really great one as one string playing lends itself to experiment with marty friedman's ideas of coming into target tones with a bend from a half tone lower sure does and also the extended part of that which is coming into those target tones and being ever so slightly flat something marty friedman does that's absolutely fabulous there's a marty friedman uh flat nine we like now that is kind of maybe just a little bit past a quarter tone, but it sounds so good. Mm -hmm. 
same deal with this slightly flat five that we got in there. Okay, so uh, another observation. Keith MOF found it very limiting. Did anybody come up with some really cool stuff that they really like? Let me know, because we're about to embark on another one, right? We've done that five minutes with one string. It's time for two strings. G string and B string this time. Here we go, close up cam, let's do it. Right from the beginning, I'm gonna start. We have another five minutes, G string and B string, right? Once you get the right notes, the challenge with making it interesting begins, says Marcy, for sure. Uh, makes me try and bend and slide more to get different sounds. Fantastic, great. Uh, lots of slipping and sliding, totally agree. Okay, G and B strings, here we go, I'll go first. more creative, more free because you have two strings. If we'd started with this, you probably wouldn't feel that way, but immediately it feels like the brakes have come off. Your turn. But it doesn't feel like we have everything available to us. We still have kind of parameters to play within, but it's pretty cool. We like it. All right, let's go again. mistake right now right right now here we go my turn your turn I need to tune that B string I think I have to stretch that out tune Oops. my turn still G and B strings Don't have to concentrate on all the strings more than you feel. You're absolutely right. 100% correct. My turn. Your turn. You coming up with some cool stuff? I think so. So we're coming up to the three minute mark. We're going to do four minutes of this. I said five. Trixie now, I might just chill that out for a little bit. All right, my turn again. Your turn. All right, my turn. heavy bit we'll finish after this your turn found myself wanting that C sharp and wasn't you how to get it very interesting all right my turn going to take one more minute to make your observations right what happened when we went from two strings to three strings let me know in the comments right I want your observations we've had some really great ones about what happened with the one string uh, wood with one of my favorites so far you don't have to concentrate on all the strings more on the feel for sure when you limit your options you can really start to focus in on what it is that you actually want to play
Um, and you'll start to find yourself thinking a little more about like, I want to play this note, how do I get it? Etc. 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 Very cool stuff, right? We like a little bit of that. Uh, Daryl Queen says, every time I break concentration, I find myself in an adjacent string. For sure. It's almost like... Um it's almost like you know you fall into these habits and these licks that you are um you're used to playing and you just go on like finger autopilot but when you remove some strings man interesting stuff happens we have two more versions of this we're going to do the next one we're going to do is a three string version we're going to have g we'll have b and we're going to have d as well why not we'll have the d string too we're going to avoid the high e because we all know how to play the high e and all that sort of stuff we don't often explore the d string up in these dusty reaches so we'll get onto that uh so another really great comment here is it seems as though the g string positions with frets uh without markers sounded better and on the b string the frets with markers uh worked more now the, that makes a lot of sense to be fair because down here especially we have all of this sort of stuff um larry warren says uh i will go over this stream again dude yeah watch it in the replay if you want to use this as a guided session you're more than welcome to right more than welcome to uh got stuck on moving horizontally on g uh and expand on b not so much horizontal movement on b well maybe that's something you can experiment with more in the next part because we're going to three strings it's d string g string b string let's go five minutes d g b Already I like that. Your turn. Wasn't sure about that last little boo boo, but that's fine. It's immaterial. I'm gonna take a turn, I'm gonna start up here somewhere, I think. Your turn. My turn. notes there but that's okay i was reaching for something couldn't quite find it i'm gonna try and reach for it again my turn stuff my turn your turn one of the C sharp there didn't have one ran out of fretboard there so I had to resolve on the fifth but that's kind of fun that was okay wouldn't have done that otherwise I'm gonna try that again oops Turn. Here we go. Your turn. Now this should feel quite freeing compared to the restricted playing that we've done so far. But I'm gonna go like this one more time. I'll go. Let 
Drivers make motif development harder, sure do, but they also encourage you to play motifs that you wouldn't reach for otherwise. So I'm gonna go like this, two more passes. Your turn, I need bend and sharp up here, I might need heavier strings. All right, I'm gonna go like this. Your turn. You have the last turn here. All right, let's stop that there. Look, we've got one more that we're gonna do. One more that we're gonna do. So, um. Right, let's get into this one. This one's gonna be a weird one, but I'll uh, <laughs> I'll show you that as we go. So, um, first of all though, quick moment to check your observations. Let me know in the comments how you're getting on with this. If you're finding uh, some cool stuff out of this three string uh, kind of session, let me know, right? How did you find that transition from one string to two strings to three strings? Did you find one easier than the other? Did you find one more productive than the other? Did you carry any ideas from the one string through to the three strings, uh, et cetera, the sort of thing? Uh, here's an interesting one. Two strings uh, let me find interesting shapes. I find this myself. I find one string and two strings seem to be really, really, useful and interesting. Three strings is limiting in its own way, but I find like I'm a little more free to um, you know, play the sort of things I'd normally play, whereas two strings is, is restrictive in a very, very interesting fashion. But even still, it's important to make these little progressions. So what we're gonna do next, we're gonna change things up. So instead of doing, uh, this will be our last one, by the way, instead of doing just four strings, which would be the next obvious choice, we're gonna change things up and we're gonna start to eliminate strings. So this time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna give ourselves free reign, but we're gonna eliminate two of the strings, right? And we're gonna be really cruel about this. We're gonna eliminate the B string and the D string, right? I'll say that again, B string and D string. No B string, no D string, not allowed, right? Uh, oh, no way, what are the chances, right? I resorted to skip between D and B to find more interesting intervals. Yeah, sure, you'll, you'll find yourself doing that. Well, <laughs> you're gonna be resorting to some more string skips now um, because, uh, yes, oh, I play much more melodic. Maybe I should play baritone. Everyone should own a baritone, man. Um, baritones are great. But yes, no B string, no D string. Let's see what we come up with. This could be really interesting. Five minutes. Five minutes of your life to play some really interesting lines. Let's do it, and I'm gonna kick things off. Your turn. No D string, no B string, remember. Low E string's fine. A string's fine. G string's fine, E string's fine. My turn. Turn. And we'll discover the octave relationship yet. All right. This is challenging, I appreciate it. This is my turn. Your turn. Fluff that, should have been there. That's okay. It sounds fresh, says PJ. I agree. Right, this is a real habit breaker. I'll go like this. Your turn. And we find themselves really wanting to play this G sharp note here and not being able to. It's part and fun of this stuff. Really playing some cool melodic stuff. Very challenging to skip B and D for sure. I agree, right? This is a challenging part of this session. Challenge for me too. All right, so my turn, I'm gonna go here. Your turn. My turn.
I'll play the D string. Your turn. Whoops. I found myself reaching for a note, couldn't get it. I'll play the D string. Whoops. Never mind. Never mind. That's okay. I'm gonna go like this. Your turn. Playing some interesting stuff though. Some cool, interesting musical phrasing, I think, if nothing else. My turn. Here we go. Your turn. Phrasing an octave sounds cool. Play something on the G string, or the A string, then the G string, then the E string. That works really well. I'm going to explore that in my next part, which is right about now. Find a way to incorporate strings, give seventh up edges. Of course, of course, of course. Let's do some of that. My turn. And we do the, the guthrie tapping if you wanted to. Your turn. We're not here to shred. It's not what we're doing today. I don't know what I'm talking about. We're doing it every day. No more shred. No more shred. I'm going to be a good boy. Okay, my turn. Your turn. You get the last word here. Okay, and um, we're gonna stop. Rest, nice and easy. Now, Take a minute, let me know in the comments your observations from those four sessions. We had one string, two strings, three strings, missing strings, right? So let me know which ones you found really easy, which ones you found really hard, if you came up with any. Uh, that's cheating, Nick. It is absolutely cheating. It absolutely is cheating, I promise. Yeah, it totally is. Uh, let me know if you came up with some cool lines, by the way. This is the important thing, right? If you come away from one of these sessions with even just one new cool idea, you have done a big win for your guitar playing, right? Because it's an idea you can play all the time, right? We all have these phrases we play all the time. Wouldn't it be cool to conjure up some new ones? This is a good way to get them, right? So if you've got some cool new lines out of that, really, really pleased to hear that. Now, we're going to take a minute and we're going to move on to uh, the Q&A for a moment, but I'm going to take a quick second because if you have questions, drop them down below, right? We're going to do the Q&A in a moment. Um, so here's an interesting one. We're going to go through your observations, see how everybody got on. Uh, really cool stuff from you guys as well, by the way. Right, we like this an awful lot. Um, so let's start with um, Cracker Tom, who used a lot of triads and rakes. I can definitely see that for sure. Um, I can imagine the rakes would be just a kind of a cool way to, to kind of musically distinguish those movements from one string to another. That's cool. We like that a lot. Uh, Marcy found a way to incorporate. You you encouraged me, right? And and I didn't even do it terribly well, but you encouraged me. Uh, Daryl Queen, says, uh, this really encourages you to switch positions as well when you switch uh, strings between high E and G to get a real sense of cohesive motion for sure, right? 100% agree. Uh, Sacred God Slayer says two strings was the most boring. Uh, Mark Crandall says uh, it was hard skipping between the B and D strings. I totally agree, right? Now, Hopefully you guys found this useful. What I would do is that would be an example of a 20 minute practice session uh, for myself, right? I would normally spend, personally, I would normally spend 10 minutes on each one of these, but that would be the whole stream, right? So five minutes is enough to, to demonstrate this stuff. I feel like 10 minutes is the sweet spot if you can, but if you have 20 minutes, here's the cool thing, right? You have 20 minutes, you can see how you can sit down and take this approach and come up with some amazing new lines that you wouldn't have thought to play otherwise. It's a great way to generate new musical ideas because it forces you to, right? You've got 10 minutes, you've got to fill it with one string. What are you gonna do? Well, you're gonna come up with some new stuff is what you're gonna do, otherwise you'll, <laughs> boy yourself rigid um so yeah really really great um i think it's a fantastic approach there are other approaches we can take too we're going to answer some questions uh in a minute so if you have questions drop your questions down below We've got a question comment below when we come back from this very very brief break where i can show you a little bit about what to play as much as how to play um we're going to be answering your questions and i'll get the actual 
great banner for this one as well. But before we do, uh, a quick word on another one of our courses. This is Mastering Modes Part 1. If you want a little bit more information on not just the how to play, but on the what to play, this is where you go to find it. <laughs> modes what are modes how do i use them when do i use them well modes are one of the things that the pros use to add excitement and color to the guitar parts and there is no reason why you can't use them too now for some reason people especially certain online guitar teachers love to make modes seem complicated and scary but i'm here to tell you they really really aren't and in fact if you know the pentatonic scale i can show you how to play modes with just two extra notes in this course, I'll show you how to play killer sounding guitar solos using modes without any of the mystery. You'll learn how to play musical sounding solos all across the neck in any key, crucially without sounding like you're just running up and down scales. So, if you're ready to take this next step with me, click the link to find out more. Kaboom! There you go, that is Mastering Modes Part 1. Now, you can check that out as part of your GI Plus subscription, along with all the other great courses we have. We've got a few minutes left, right? We've run over, because we always run over. So we're going to do some Q&A stuff. Uh, if you have questions, drop them down below. We've still got time to get them in, but I want to quickly hit this one. This is one from Marcin, right? Marcin has asked me the question that I actually want to answer the most, which is, what was my favorite gear at the NAMM show? Oh, man. We played some great gear, let me tell you, right? Some, uh, some... If I had to give awards... That's going to be tough to do. Uh, one thing I didn't see too much of uh, was, um, was was cool new pedals that I was very excited about. Uh, there was one new pedal which blew my mind, right? Absolutely blew my mind. Uh, and it was the... Um, the uh kernom moho i just think what it's called there it's the the orange one um it's cool because it, it kind of looks a little bit like a piece of cheese which i like but um yeah the kernom moho i'm gonna look at the kernom ridge over here i'll show you this right now for you guys that don't know so big shout out to the kernom guys they're great right this is the kernom ridge this is not an ad but um look at that autofocus there it is right kernom ridge it's called the million moods overdrive so what you have is essentially you have um a drive that gives you your typical overdrive controls, which is your um, kind of amount of gain over here, amount of output, nothing new under the sun there. We've got a mid control, okay, that's interesting. We have a pre and post tone. Now this is really interesting because that gives you the ability to dial in more top end of the front of the pedal and more low end at the back end or vice versa. You can make it kind of like really kind of clanky uh, or you can make an articulate or you can make it really kind of thuddy and all that sort of thing, etc., etc., etc. But this is the cool bit. Up here, they have the, uh, the mood knob, right? So the mood knob takes you from, let me see if I can do this in reverse, clean boosts through to um, kind of like a colored boost, if that makes sense, uh, into, uh, so I think that's, oh yeah, sorry, that's uh, symmetrical clipping asymmetrical clipping, high gain, hard clipping stuff, and then fuzz-ish tones. This thing is unbelievable. The amount of tones you can get out of it is absolutely incredible. It has MIDI and it has presets on it. So it's literally the only overdrive pedal. I mean, I'm about to, I haven't got around to putting it on my board yet, but um, I'm literally just gonna take all the overdrives off my board I have. Let's see, uh, one, two, three, four, five overdrives. And they're all going. Right, so everybody wants overdrives. <laughs> you know what to do. Um, anyway, so that's the Kernam Ridge. Uh, new for Nam is the Moho, and it's a fuzz, right? They've made a fuzz. You guys know I love fuzz. Um, it, it's exactly the same format, but it has this control called the electricity control, which lets you dial in either a uh, like 
an Octavia style octave up or a synth style octave down. Um, it still has MIDI, you can save presets, you can continuously control any of the parameters, um, but you also get everything from like uh, tone bender to like fuzz face type tones to muff type tones to self oscillation. It is a dream, right? I can't wait to get my hands on one, blew my mind. So yeah, that was a really cool one. Um, what else was really cool? Maybach guitars, man alive, they had some great stuff. So the Maybach guitars, they absolutely killed it, right? They brought some phenomenal stuff. Um, I think probably the thing I was most excited about apart from the, the Moho um, was the, uh, oh yeah, that's the other one, um, the new Martins. So Martin brought some beautiful guitars with them. Uh, I mentally spent, um, in my mind, I spent something like $18,000 on two guitars. I'm like, yeah, I've bought those guitars. I don't have $18,000 to spend on guitars. Uh, not that I can allocate to guitars anyway. Um, so yeah, I didn't spend that, but these guitars are incredible. They were um, essentially recreations of uh, 1937 museum pieces. They were unbelievable. Ah, here we go. Uh, he did a Martin guitar aged uh, commercial tuning Nam. Uh, a recently inherited, oh my God, dude, that's amazing. Recently inherited two uh, 1946 D18s and a 1940, oh my God. You, you're blowing my mind here, man. Those are going to be some unbelievable guitars, right? That's incredible, right? That's an amazing, amazing windfall of guitars. I'm very jealous, right? But congratulations on those beautiful instruments. I'm sure they're gorgeous, right? Sure, they're absolutely wonderful. Okay, uh, we have some more questions that are musically related. Here's an interesting one. Will you do a special article on Guitar Interactive Magazine for the 30th anniversary of Chris Oliva's death? Now, that's an interesting one. I'm going to throw that to um, Jonathan Graham because uh, that is actually a really good shout. Who knows? Maybe we will. Maybe we will. Uh, I would bet the first... Dude, yeah, you're right. You're right, it was the first. Um, oh, by the way, if you haven't done so already, you can check out our NAM coverage um, on the Guitar Interactive YouTube channel. While you're there, give us a subscribe, etc., etc. Okay, uh, more questions. Now, uh, Mark McNish asked the question, is there any advantage between in stretching between first and second finger when playing three note per string rather than playing one finger per fret, um, especially when playing scale sequences? Well, there are some times when you can't avoid it if you're playing three note per string. Um, so examples might be if we took the first position G major uh, or the root position G major three note per string shape, which would be this. That would be the three note per string version of playing this. If you wanted to play it without stretches, we would have to play something like this. Now for my money, uh, I don't think there's any uh, disadvantage to stretching, but what you get is you get easier sequencing potential. Uh, so if you wanted to play something like this, for example, where we played, let's take an easy sequence. Let's take high, low, middle, high, middle, low. This business here. That would be very difficult to play without the stretches. We can get here. clumsy so repeated fingerings become an issue um i don't think you lose anything by stretching though so um in terms of the advantage of stretching it just affords you um easier sequencing potential uh, i think it's a valuable skill to have yeah i would uh i would 100 run with that for sure when playing scale sequences in particular very very important because again you know if we wanted to avoid stretching at all costs uh this is a bit of a reductio ad absurdum but still uh you know if we took like an e minor sequence like this By the time we got here, with the first finger stretch, we'd have to play that like this. Which breaks our picking pattern. It's doable, but it's a little awkward. Um, I would say, yeah, just you know, stretch when you have to. I would also say though, with this, it's generally better as a rule of thumb to stretch between fingers one and two then it is to stretch between fingers three and four, just purely because finger one is very long, right? It doesn't really mind that stretch. Finger four, 
pretty short, you know, asking it to stretch that distance. It's not very nice. It's not got the biggest reach in the world, uh, so to speak. So, you know, it can be done. Absolutely. You see Paul Gilbert do this all the time where he'll do this sort of thing, uh, where he'll play. Uh, Now, that would be something I would reserve for uh, if you have long fingers like Paul. I would, generally speaking, rather than play here, I would be playing this. That would be my approach to that. I'd be stretching between fingers one and two rather than fingers three and four. Hopefully that helps, Mark. It's a really great question. Very, very interesting indeed. Uh, Here's another one, really great question from, uh, let me actually find the thing, uh, from Crankatom. Now, this this is a two-part question. Um, I can't find the first bit. Um, oh, sorry, no, it's regarding our skipping strings thing. Of course it is. Um, which is, uh, Mr. Strings is close to the one three one approach Sam Bell uses in an extreme shredding, a game changer for me. It really is, right? Now, for you guys who don't know, the one three one approach um, would be something like this, where if we took, uh, let's go back to that G major scale thing here. Where we would take, sorry, three one three, where we take three notes on a given string, and then we play the middle note on the next string. It's not actually the middle note, but it usually is. And then all three notes in the string that follows. Now for this, I'll usually reach for... But it gives you these really cool modern sounds. You can economy pick it, you can uh, do it with hybrid picking. Very, very cool, right? Really, really great idea. I totally agree. Now, here's a question. We'll, we'll finish on this one from Mustache Metal. Uh, any tips Any tips regarding the minor third interval uh, between the G and B strings? Uh, threw me a bit with this improv, may just be in the key. Now, I'll be honest, I chose the key deliberately because it's not one that people spend a lot of time in, C sharp minor. We play E major sometimes, but... Um, yeah, the minor third interval, uh, the interval of the minor third uh, between these two strings is going to be this guy. Suddenly Tom Quayle's fourth tuning looks quite appealing when you start thinking about this, doesn't it? But then you don't get to play ACDC tunes, and we love that. So, um, you know, you can't play this. So Rolling Stones are off the the menu um, with fourth tuning, unless you very... Uh, could you? That'd be difficult. Yeah, it'd be hard. So maybe we wouldn't do that. But anyway, listen. Um, yeah, the mi minor third interval is going to be uh, like this interval here, where we play. What I would say with this is it's quite easy to reach for a minor third up a single string, or we have to reach back and get it. So you'll find yourself, for example, if we're in C sharp here. If you're on your first finger, probably just as easy to reach up with your fourth finger and get it there. If you find yourself on your uh, second, third, fourth fingers, when you reach back and get it, what you will notice, pardon me, what you will notice is that um, I tend to give this a little bit of a bend if I'm playing the actual third. Um, but yeah, great question. Very, very good question. Uh, you would actually find that interval itself, by the way, on uh, the ninth fret on the G string. It's an E note in this case, uh, which kind of goes back to our thing of like, you know, the non marked frets sound really good. With the exception of nine which we need for that minor third. Anyway, listen, guys, we've run over because we always run over. Uh, but listen, thank you so much for having me. I hope you've got some use out of this. If you want to take the stream and play it back and use it as a guided practice session, hey, that would be great. It's going to be available on the Guitar Interactive YouTube channel. Uh, make sure you subscribe to us if you haven't done so already so we can let you know when we're about to go live with all of uh, our, well, all of our cool content that we're posting, but also with these streams. Um, guys, I'm going to bid you adieu. I'm going to play a little bit more. Uh, this would be an example of what I would do at the end of my practice session uh, when I've done all of this stuff, which is what I would consider to be summing up. So just kind of going over the stuff I've played and, you know, revisiting ideas that were cool, uh, consolidating stuff that I liked, etc., etc., etc. But for the time being, I want to say goodbye. My name is Nick Jennings from Guitar Interactive. I will see you next week, Monday evening, more of the same. Let's do it.
that's quite enough practice for me. I'll see you guys next week. Take care of yourselves. My name is Nick Jennison and it's a pleasure to introduce to you GI Plus, the brand new lesson platform brought to you by Guitar Interactive. We've assembled a team of the best players and educators in the world to bring you exclusive lessons covering everything from metal to blues to fusion and everything in between. Want to level up your shred chops? Check out How to Play Fast by Andy James. Or how about Sweet Picking with Rick Graham? Maybe country's more your bag. Well, how about a full-length exclusive country guitar course from Andy Wood? Interested in learning how to play over changes? Well, members get access to hours of exclusive lessons from fusion maestro Tom Quayle. Or maybe you want your playing to sound more soulful. Well, who better than Chris Buck to show you how it's done? Or perhaps you want to learn the secrets of the masters. Well, members get access to over 60 feature-length tech sessions where our tutors painstakingly decode the styles of players like David Gilmore, Eddie Van Halen, John Petrucci, Larry Carlton, Tosin Abbasi, Paul Gilbert, and many more. You get all this along with exclusive live webinars, free backing tracks, competitions, and so much more. So what are you waiting for? Sign up for GI Plus today.